Hello, we're still on the menopause subject here and I'm lucky enough to have Elizabeth with me. Hi Elizabeth. Hi Sophie. Thank Hi, you. Oh, thank you for coming and speaking with your wisdom. Work. This lady has a lot of words of wisdom. So I first met Elizabeth when we were both invited to go on BBC Radio Sussex to talk the menopause. Because um, I did my vlog and so they saw it and asked me and they've asked Elizabeth because she's got an amazing company in her own business um, called M Skin and the uh, website is www.mskin.co.uk and Elizabeth specialises in helping people with the menopause, with PMS and also skin aesthetic so making your skin look younger and youthful and I'll be going to see Elizabeth on a regular <laughs> basis but anyway so I met Elizabeth at the radio um, you had <coughs> You were just, well, you know the subject. Um, um, I've come to my life where I've hit the menopause and um, want to help people talk about it, not feel isolated, not feel alone. Um, and when I met you, I just thought you were such an inspiration. Oh. And you know your onions, as they say, and we just need more information yeah. because it's very confusing. You know, um, okay. there's so much going on that unless you speak to people that know what they're talking about, you can get very, very confused. And you're pretty confused as it is because you're in the <laughs> middle of a menopause. Um, so do you find that people find it hard to kind of talk about it and they're kind of ashamed of it? Or I find that, yeah, it's, it's still a topic that's not, it's, we're only just starting to talk about. And um, also I find that women sometimes suffer for a long time and you know, they wait years till they actually go and see somebody. Yeah, which yeah. is terrible, isn't it? And it really affects the quality of their life. Yeah, that's what was interesting, because when I messaged mm. you, I started doing a diary, didn't I? So that basically, because some days you can feel fine and some days you feel really wobbly. And I suppose it's looking at how much it kind of affects your day-to-day -day routine mm. or your week or your month. Um, and also we have this, thing where we kind of want to be brave I don't know why mm -hmm. you know I mean I in one of my posts I'm with um, two of my best mates Inga and Holly and in you know but they have both well Inga's kind of coming out the other side and mm -hmm. so she's faced it and she she uh, she took antidepressants because she felt really low in her mood and Holly um, has gone the HRT route and they've both found it very beneficial but it took them time to find it, mm. number one, because the doctors mm. didn't really understand what they were talking about, to be honest, on both of their, for them. For me, I haven't yet started taking anything because I'm trying to weigh up, do I need it? Mm. But we all try and be so brave, don't we? Like, we can get through this without, and I'm kind of thinking, that might be a bit, that's a little bit mad as well, because what's that about? And sometimes it takes a bit of time to recognise that the symptoms are actually yeah. related, that it's the beginning of the menopause, so you might just find you're starting with sleeping problems, that you wake up in the mornings and and then other problems might come on top of that, so yeah, it's, um, you know, it's a long process, so the, the menopause doesn't hit you as day one, you know, it's no, it is. It's a build-up, it isn't it? It builds up slowly, the many years, and you may still be bleeding. You haven't yeah. had your final period. You're already starting to feel some symptoms, and it just continues and continues. And some women are fine with it, so not everybody's the same. No, which is yeah, which is what I'm saying. Some very severe, mm. you know, to the point of really, really, really struggling, and some not a lot. When I've spoken to people, like in the medical, you know, in like my GPs and things, not all my GPs, um, but a couple of them, they've kind of belittled perimenopause. It, 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 it feels like they're belittling it, saying, well, you're not there yet, darling. Mm. You're only perimenopause. Or, and I'm thinking, well, I'm, f I'm not feeling great. What is it, what, it, what's the difference between really what you feel with perimenopause or to menopause? Do you know what I mean? It, does it just, mm. what is that? Because I still feel like I'm in it and there's being yeah. feel like I'm not. So, I mean, first of all, I have to say that for NHS GPs, it's not easy no. as well, because they're under a lot of stress and they only have 10 minute appointments. I know, I know. So they, don't, they can't give you the same amount of time. 
that you get in a one to one like you know, no that you do, you, you yeah, yeah, yeah. where you actually can go through the whole of your problems and a lot of the GPs also haven't got the experience or you know education so there are is some evidence yeah. that we haven't been educated so well which surpri um, that surprises me and that's in a way with people talking yeah. i kind of want that to change because it's a big deal it's very you know yeah we all all women half of the population are going to go through, through that yeah so yeah. that surprises me it is yeah. you know so anyway so yeah so going back to you and um, having problems in the perimenopause you don't have to wait mm -hmm. to be postmenopausal to start treatment yeah so you if can you're feeling your quality of life is affected now yeah we can look at your hormones and then decide upon the hormones if we can find a treatment that matches and fits you and individualize it for your needs What made you want to kind of do this? So, um, somehow it just happened to me. So I have this uh, really lovely colleague of mine, Susie Rockwell. Um, she's a GP who also specialised uh, in um, body identical HRT, or she does bioidentical HRT. And um, her clinic is so fully booked that she said for years, Liz, do you want to come and work with me? Um, I then, she then introduced me to Mr. Nick Panay, who has a clinic in Harley Street and arranged for me to have a sit-in where I just observed and then I must have asked the right questions or silly questions I don't know but um, he kindly then invited me again and offered to train me which I felt really fortunate um, and ever since I then became his associate in Harley Street so wow, okay. apart from my clinic in Hove I also work one day a week in London. Yeah so lucky when I met you and they said Elizabeth works in Harley Street I was like oh you know, because it is a schlep, isn't it? Especially sometimes with Southern Rail. It's a whole different <laughs> ball game. That's another conversation. But, you know, then when I heard you had a place in Hove, I was mm. like, yes. Yeah. Let's start on the different, what is what? Because mm -hmm. it was interesting, because I've written down here, what is the difference between HRT and body identical hormone therapy? Mm -hmm. And you said it's all HRT. Yeah, so right, HRT so is... Here we go. HRT is hormone replacement therapy. Right. So body or bioidentical um, HRT is also HRT. It's just umbrella is HRT. Right. But they're different types. Yes. So um, what we call HRT normally is what people understand often is the synthetic HRT. Which, sorry, butting in, um, is we all grew up with the fear about the breast cancer because that was our era, mm -hmm. you know, when we were children and all our mums were kind of taken off it. That is that kind of HRT, isn't it? So, um, or not? I mean, in theory, so the most data we have mm. is about synthetic HRT. Right. And the data we have about the body identical HRT is still smaller because less women are on the body identical HRT. Than yes. on, you know, the majority of the studies have been done with synthetic HRT. Right. Yeah. When we talk about breast cancer, we always have to understand that breast cancer there that you have a background risk of yes. breast cancer it's yeah? At, yeah yeah so 23 out of a thousand women will get breast cancer over five years that's the baseline yes. spontaneous mutation and you get breast cancer now hrt will increase and that's synthetic hrt will yeah. increase your breast cancer risk um one extra woman for 1,000 women will get yes. cancer. So actually the scare, because what I've learned also is the scare was actually, it was too much, you know, it, it, you were more likely to get breast cancer mm -hmm. drinking two units of alcohol than you are, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, so similar. actually it, we, we were really scared when we didn't need to be so scared. Yeah. It isn't as bad at all. And it kind of helps with cardiovascular dementia and osteoporosis. Yeah, it's so actually, yeah, it's yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yes, yeah, yeah, it's proven to be helpful. Older. So, which is also yeah. very good to know that it actually has it is beneficial, and the cancer scare was a bit over the top. Yeah, so there is only a slight risk increase, but yeah. it's significant. Yeah. If your body mass index is over thirty, then it, it doubles your breast cancer risk. But if you exercise only two and a half hours of moderate exercise per week, yeah. then you can reduce your breast cancer risk. So really it's about seeing the bigger picture 
and if you're worried you could even decide um, maybe to go for a private um, you know mammogram in between the NHS checks or yes. at least go for the NHS check. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's not that painful, be, is it, for girls out there? The mammogram isn't. I've had it, I've had a couple, and it actually it's fine. Yeah, it's not comfortable. No, but, but it's, it's not agony. It. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's definitely peace of mind.